nature knowledge. Greetings, I'm Mara with the Nature School here at the Trustees Moose Hill Farm in Sharon. And I would like to welcome you to the first episode of Nature Knowledge, which I hope will be a fun way for us to explore together even while we're apart. So today I am at a very special place on the farm. I think my nature school friends will recognize it. Uh, this special body of water is a vernal pool, which we have many vernal pools here at the farm and in the surrounding area. So what is a vernal pool? A vernal pool is a unique and wonderful uh, wildlife habitat uh, within a body of water like this one. Uh, they can range in size. This is a very small one, but they can be quite big. Um, and they have a very special feature. The water inside the pool will eventually dry up. Now it'll fill up again once there's enough rainfall or snow melt or um, enough groundwater rises up. But at some point, it will completely dry up, maybe at the end of summer or fall, like this one did, or for some vernal pools, it can take years before they dry up. So why is that important that vernal pools dry up? It's important because that means fish cannot live in a vernal pool, which means that animals that fish eat have a better chance of surviving. There are lots of animals that take advantage of a fish-free environment, but there are certain animals whose life cycle absolutely positively depends on vernal pools. Now scientists have a nice term for those animals. They call them obligate species. So there are very specific frogs, salamanders, and fairy shrimp that are obligate species. So if you go to a temporary body of water like this one, and you find evidence of one of those frogs, salamanders, or fairy shrimp, then you have found a vernal pool. Now in mid-March, about a month ago, here on the farm, there were wood frogs making a big noise. Do you remember what wood frogs sound like, friends? Let me play you their call. Now you can imagine when there's hundreds and hundreds of wood frogs that that makes a big noise. Now wood frogs are one of those obligate species. Another obligate species is the spotted salamander. That is a fine looking salamander. Now I know that this body of water behind me is a vernal pool because I see evidence that some of our local salamanders have visited. Let's go take a look. So friends, now I'm right by the edge of the vernal pool and I'm gonna use this stick to help point out some of the evidence I've found that some of our local spotted salamanders have come to this pool, okay? So right here, I'm gonna use my stick to point to it. You'll see there is a large clump of eggs. And if you were able to look really closely, you would see the individual eggs in each little embryo of each little salamander. Now our spotted salamanders have to lay lots and lots of eggs. So do the frogs and other critters that use the vernal pool. Because even though there are no fish in our vernal pools, it's still a dangerous place. And so if they lay lots of eggs, there's a greater chance that some will survive. Now I'm also gonna to point to other evidence. Now this is tough to see, but at the bottom of the vernal pool, there are these little columns, white columns. And these I think my friends are spermatophores. 
<laughs> what? I know, that's a tough word. But a spermatophore is something that the male salamander will leave for the female to use to fertilize her eggs. So, once our local salamanders came out of hibernation in, this, in the woodlands around us, and when the conditions were right, they made their way here to this pool, which they have been doing year after year for generations, so that they can breed and continue their life cycles. So all this activity that we've talked about that's happening in the vernal pool happens now in spring. And that's why they're called vernal pools. Vernal is another word for spring. So this vernal pool, my friends, is just one of the many, many things that make Moose Hill Farm a special place and I encourage you to come see for yourself. Okay, that's it for our first episode of Nature Knowledge. Now that you have the knowledge, I want you to put it to use and go explore and let me know what you discover.